Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moin. Today we are going to discuss the instrumentation of fluorescent spectroscopy. This is part 2. In part 1 we have discussed the basic difference between fluorometer and spectrofluorometer. Moreover we have also discussed the various sources of radiation in part 1. I am putting the link of part 1 in the i button on the right side you can see so if you didn't see the part one so you can see the part one first in this video we will actually discuss about the wavelength selectors so we know that monochromators and optical filters are being used as wavelength selectors and fluorometers use optical filters while spectrofluorometers use monochromators while there are some spectrofluorometers which use both of these two so in this video we'll see both of these monochromators and optical filters in detail so first of all we'll see the monochromators monochromators are used to disperse polychromatic light or white light into the various colors or wavelengths this dispersion can be accomplished using prisms or diffraction gratings. So disper to, di to disperse polychromatic light into monochromatic light, we use prisms or diffraction grating inside monochromators. The monochromators in most spectrofluorometers use diffraction gratings rather than prisms because diffraction gratings give more better results than prisms. The efficiency of monochromator can be analyzed through that it should have low stray light level to avoid problems due to scattered or stray light. And what is stray light? So by stray light we mean light transmitted by the monochromator at wavelengths outside the chosen wavelength means you have set your instrument at some wavelength means you want the radiation of some specific wavelength but your instrument is allow allowing the wavelength other than your interested one also so that radiation is called the stray light the slit widths are generally variable that depends upon our interest Sometime we are working on a single wavelength and sometime we are working on a range of wavelengths. So definitely slit width vary according to our desire. And a typical monochromator will have both an entrance and exit slit through which light enters the monochromator and exit out of the monochromator. The light intensity that passes through a monochromator is approximately proportional to the scale of the slit widths mean greater the slit widths so definitely intensity of light will be higher that passes through it and vice versa and larger slit widths yield increased signal level so if slit width is large so the signal level will be increased and therefore there will be the higher signal to noise ratios while if the slit widths are smaller so it it will produce high resolution but it, it will be all on the expense of light intensity means the light intensity will be low in this case monochromators can have planar or concave gratings and these are shown here in the figure you can see here is the planar grating and here is the concave grating. Planar gratings are usually produced mechanically while concave gratings are produced holographically. If these gratings are produced not accurately means if there are imperfections of the gratings so there will be these will be the source of stray light transmission by monochromators means the 
what do you say the manufacturing of the grading this is very much important step because if there is any problem then it, it may cause the stray light transmission through the monochromators and which will also cause the ghost images from the gratings and this will disturb our overall results monochromators based on concave gratings can have fewer reflecting surfaces you can see over here so there are few reflecting surfaces as compared to this plane grating so definitely there are lower stray light chances and it can be more efficient as concave grating uh, as it can serve as both the diffraction and focusing element for these reasons the holographic gratings are usually preferable for flore fluorescent spectroscopy now we'll see the stray light in monochromators the stray light level of the monochromator is a critical parameter for fluorescence measurement means our fluorescence result their quality that very much dependent upon the level of this stray light and which is actually dependent on the quality of the monochromator now what is stray light it is defined as any light that passes through the monochromator besides the desired wavelength to avoid these stray lights double grating monochromators are frequently used especially for excitation and this thing we have already seen in the part when part one when we have seen the schematic diagram of this uh, of the instrumentation of fluorescent spectroscopy so we have used there that we use double grating monochromators the stray light rejection of holographic gratings is superior to that of the mechanically produced ruled gratings so it means that the holographic gratings are superior to the mechanically produced gratings it appears that the passage of stray light depends upon imperfections in the gratings and as i mentioned earlier that the stray light that all depends upon the imperfection of the gratings so that also result in the ghost images which can escape from the monochromators and disturb the quality of our results so this was all about the monochromators and now we'll see the optical filters most of the spectrofluorometers are using optical filters in addition to monochromators for wavelength selection purpose optical filters are being used to compensate for the less than ideal behavior of monochromator means monochromators alone they can't behave ideally so to improve their performance optical filters are being used to gather them also when the spectral properties of a fluorophore are known the maximum sensitivity is often obtained using filters rather than monochromators so they give good result together with monochromators and the manufacturers they typically provide the transmission spectra of the filters through which we can get the many useful informations about optical filters again the major sources of errors in all fluorescence measurements is the interference and that is caused due to the scatter light which is also known as the stray light or that may be due to some sample impurities and all of these problems these can be minimized by careful selection of the emission filter together with the use of optical filters in addition to the excitation and emission monochromators and by the control experimental design to reveal the presence of the any unwanted components present there so if all of these things can be performed then these problems can be overcome 
so there are large range of filters which are available and we will discuss some of them here one by one so first one is color filters before the advancements in thin film technology most filters were colored glass filters colored glass filters these can transmit a range of wavelengths some color filters are called long pass filters as they transmit all the wavelengths above some particular wavelength the names of the filters divide them into classes according to their colors like here are some of the examples like BG filters blue glass filters GG filters green glass filters etc and here are the uh, transmission spectra of some of the color filters you can see the BG 12 and BG 18 and here are some other color filters and their transmission spectra are shown over here next one is thin film filters during the past 10 years there have been significant advancement in the design of thin film optical filters almost any desired transmission curve that can be obtained in the case of thin film filters these filters are now being designed for specific applications rather than choosing the color glass filter so these best suit in the in any application so what does this mean that these filters are quite very much specific then thin film filters these are also available to specifically transmit or reject even laser lines laser light can contain some additional wavelengths as well in addition to the main laser line which can be made more monochromatic by passing the, by passing the laser beam through these thin film filters next one is filter combinations while one can obtain almost any desired filter with modern coating technology but sometime this doesn't remain practical that to design filter for each and every experiment then there might be some other problem that a single filter is not working sufficiently for 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 some experiment so in this case there might be possible that we may combine two or more bandpass filters to obtain our desired spectral properties for example the UG11 and WG320 filters these are often used in laboratory to isolate isolate protein fluorescence the, so this is an example of filter combination so dear students this is all about the wavelength selectors if you like my video then like it and subscribe my channel to get in touch with with the third part of fluorescence instrumentation thanks for watching thank you very much